famous preacher today on the radio as I was running to and fro and everywhere. I think I've driven over 100 miles today, I think. And I was listening. He had a scientist on their, the program with him. And one guy called in and he asked this question. Now, we've been studying about secrets in Genesis, haven't we? And he had this question. He said, my son is a, loves God and everything else, but he has a hard time believing that Jesus is the incarnation of Christ. He has a hard time believing in the incarnation of Christ. And so the scientist came back on there and he said, well, he's going to have to just do it by faith because there's nothing in the Bible, no medical science, that can prove the, the incarnation of Christ or the virgin birth of Christ. Brother Ray, what would you tell this person? The scientist blew it, didn't he? Yes, sir. Well, he blew it. Is there evidence in the Bible? Is there proof in medical science that Jesus could be virgin born? Yes. What is it? What would you tell somebody? It's either from the uh, mother to the child, there's no transfer in the blood. And whatever blood is transferred from the male, which is uh, the avenue of uh, stuff in you. Okay. Now, let's repeat this again. And if you want to really get into this deep, it's uh, the chemistry of the blood by Dr. M. R. Nahan. You can study this, but it's in the Word of God. Uh, this scientist said, there's no way that you can prove or validate the Bible from science or anthropology or, or archaeology. Ooh. Boy, he went there unarmed, didn't he? Totally unarmed. First of all, the virgin birth is absolutely possible scientifically and, medi and by, according to medical science, is it not? The blood of the father goes into the child and that's what affects every one of the children in this world and makes them sinners. The woman does not pass on the nature of sin. In Genesis 3.15, as we studied um, the other day, <laughs> I don't remember what class. I teach so many classes I can't remember. I teach about seven classes a week. And I forget systematic which. What, theology. Systematic theology. Okay, thank you. I didn't remember. <laughs> In systematic we've thought theology, Genesis 3.15, Lord God, Jehovah Elohim, spoke to the snake. But who was he actually speaking to? Was he speaking to Nahash or who? Satan. Satan. He said, I'll put active hatred between your seed and her seed. Your seed and her seed. Who's his seed? The Antichrist. Satan's seed is the Antichrist. Every Antichrist that's ever been born. But he has one that specifically Satan will cover a woman and bring forth a child in his image, basically. And it's not going to be an ugly guy either. He's not going to have a tail and a pitchfork and all that. He's going to be a beautiful, uh, very charismatic person. And he said, I'll put active hatred between your seed and her seed. Did it say man's seed? No, it's her seed. Because if the child was from man's seed, from Adam's seed, and guess what? They always traced it what? What did the Jews always trace the lineage from the father, not the mother? Why did God use the mother? Now we find out down through Jewish history, they did get the gist of it. Because I don't care who you are, you may have a Gentile father, but if you've got a Jewish mother, you're considered a Jew. Because they knew that the Messiah could come through the child, did they not? Through the woman, the child would come. And Eve, when she brought forth this child, she said, hey, I've gotten a man. Et Jehovah. Et Jehovah. What does that mean, Sharon? I have brought forth Jehovah. And then what did he do? Right committed murder. He was an antichrist. 
we know that Adam was his father, but what we see in, in Cain, Cain, is that we see the whole rebellion of their lives in that. Okay? How about the earth? How about the earth? What would you say to somebody about the earth? Can you prove that God created the earth? You would go to Genesis 1 and 1, wouldn't you? And God created earth in eternity past. Now, if you are a young age or a new earth, a young earth person, you are totally unarmed with this. Forget it. And they will deny that you can even teach this in the Bible. But what does the Bible say about the earth? Is the earth old? The earth goes back in eternity past, doesn't it? It goes back in eternity past. Now the earth to them therefore is real old. We don't know how old it is. How old is man, by the way? Six, seven, Six, seven eight, ten thousand years old. Probably not over that at all. According to what? What chronology you study. Now that's more than what most people even see. I mean, these guys have got themselves in a box. And they can't see out and they won't let light come in. Okay? There are ways you can prove what happened. Genesis, the first chapter, Genesis, the second chapter, Genesis 1 and 1 says, Barashith bara Elohim eth Hashemayim we eth Aretz. In beginnings, in one of the beginnings, what happened? He had created Elohim, the heavens, and then the earth. Which order? The heavens first, and then took the earth and placed it in there. And then it says, We Aretz. And the earth became formless and void. Is there Bible is there Bible verses that say that the earth did this? Yes, sir. In eternity past? Yes. It's not in, in not in the what we have in Genesis first chapter is the reconstruction of the earth, not the creation of it. Do you got that? We have the reconstruction of the earth and not the creation of it. For what verses would you give me to prove that God had created the earth perfect? Genesis 1 and 1. And he did not create it formless and void, did he? But then in Genesis 1 and 2, the earth was destroyed. Where would we find the verses that would tell us that Satan did this? Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28. Look up here. Isaiah 14, 12 through 15, Ezekiel 28. Those two verses tell us what happened in eternity past, and we know that the earth is old. But if you're a young earth person, you're out of this, you're out of this ball game. You don't believe that. You don't believe that at all. But what does the Bible tell us? How did the fossils get in the earth? I, I drilled oil wells and water wells. How do the fossils get in the earth? How did they get there? They're there, aren't they? Now, if you're if you're a Mormon, when you have physical evidence of something, that you'll say that the devil put that there to fool you. Now, <clears throat> in the book of Genesis, it says also is that the earth was one planet one piece of ground earth on one side and water on the other side does it not does science tell you this yes this is called what Pangea or Godwana does science and the Bible agree does it in time elements it may not, but in fact it does, doesn't it? Now, if in eternity past, now when, when we see in Genesis, the first chapter, we see that this is the way God created the earth. Now, probably when he created the earth back here in this period of time, it was that way also. But something happened to it. Ezekiel 28, how many Edens are there in the Bible? Okay. Two Edens. What are these Edens? What are these Edens? Their throne room for somebody. Who was in the first throne room in Eden? 
Hillel or Lucifer. Say Hillel. Hillel. Hillel is his real name. Lucifer is Latin. Right. Okay. Lucifer does not is not mean a bad. That's not a bad name at all. Like Judas. Do you see anybody naming their children Judas today? No. no? They don't usually do it, but that is a wonderful name. Judas is kind of a perversion of what Ju the name is. The name is Judah. In the Bible, we have Judas, according to King James, and Jude and Judah. Judas, Jude, and Judah, but they're all Judah. It's Yehuda. Say who Yehuda. Yehuda. Yehuda means praise Jehovah. Now, is that a bad name? No. But people won't name their child Judas. They, have you ever seen any children named Judah? Same name. Have you ever heard of a child named Luke? Absolutely. We have a person that wrote the gospel according to Luke, and his name was Lucifer. Luke means Lucifer. It's a shortened form of Lucifer. So Lucifer and Luke is not a bad name, is it? How many bad people are there in the Bible? Any bad women in the Bible? How many girls have you ever known by the name of Jezebel? What about Judy? <laughs> Judy also means Judas. Or Ju that's feminine form of Judah. Okay. How many Jezebels have you known? Huh? Figuratively speaking? Huh? I, I, I didn't say that. Now, absolutely. I, know a lot of I, I have known a lot of Jezebel. A lot of them. But I don't really know one named Jezebel. I don't know a girl named Jezebel, but I've known some Jezebels. They acted like her. But the word means really good. It means to be separate and untouched, like virgin. That's what the name means. All right. That she even betrayed her own name, didn't she? In the Word of God, we have the earth as earth and water and around the earth what do we have around the earth what do we have Hashemayim say Hashemayim Hashemayim and what does Hashemayim mean uh, Sharon uplifted waters how many heavens are there in the Bible how many heavens are there in science three how many heavens are there in Islam? Seven. seven. Are there seven heavens? Was Muhammad wrong? Yes. He was against science. Muhammad taught that the earth was flat. Is the earth flat? Muhammad taught that the earth was flat and, and God created mountains to hold it down so it wouldn't blow it away. Mountains are to keep the earth from blowing away because it's flat. It's like a flat, like a tablecloth. And he put mountains on it to hold it down, keep them blowing away. And he taught that the earth set, that the earth was flat, and that the sun came up and it went down and settled and set in a muddy pond. Does the earth set in a muddy pond? No. Where did he get these ideas? He got it from Catholicism in that time. What brought on the Dark Ages? What brought on the Dark Ages? Catholicism. Baptists always knew how to read and write, didn't they? They wrote the scriptures. It was against the law to have a Bible. If you study up here in church history, we find out that the Bible was forbidden. Why did Catholicism forbid the Bible? They would say, hey, this is wrong. So if you're going to teach something contrary to the Bible, you better keep the Bible out of their hands, huh? All right? The earth was Pangea. Now, if you look at the earth, if we had a globe around here, you could see how the earth came apart. It said, the Bible says, in the days of Peleg, what? God divided the earth. And here we have all of these uh, uh, historical, we have all of these archaeological, geology, we have all of this, all of these facts out there that can prove exactly what you 
the Bible teaches. Well, see, that's what I that's what I always thought, as far as I understood that. Okay, in order for the, the certain things to be in the Bible, they have to be confirmed. I thought it was by history, by science, by archaeology. I thought all of that had to be confirmed in order for it to be in the Bible. Or else it would just be hearsay, it would be just somebody saying something. Who confirmed the Bible? Who canonized the Bible? I don't know who canonized it. The Catholic Church. The Catholic Church? The Catholic Church canonized the Bible. Now, explain canonized. They say what was going to be in the Bible, what wasn't going to be. Okay, so so that would say that a lot of things in the Bible were, should not be there. Then. They have all of the apocrypha in the Bible too, don't they? Right. Oh, in their Bible. Yes, yeah. uh -huh. yes, they do, don't they? Right. And even the reformers did not want some books in the Bible that we have. And one of the books that they didn't like the Bible was what? The book of what? The book of what? James. Because of the works and faith? Because of works. Let's go back and just think. Think. Are you thinking? I want your head. I want those wheels burning in there, okay? I want them moving on. Okay? I want them brain cells rubbing together and causing friction in there. Smoke coming out of your ears, okay? we got smoke detectors. So we're yeah, okay. We're in trouble. <laughs> Does the Bible teach that the earth was God wanted? Pagia. Yes. Does science teach that? Does it teach that the earth was divided? Yes. And what do they call that in science? The what? Continental the continental drift theory. Well, it's not really a continental drift theory. It's a continental drift fact, but it was drifting a little faster than they thought. How many of you ever heard of Atlantis? You ever heard of Atlantis? The lost continent of Atlantis. Have you heard that? Raise them your hands. Okay, you've heard it. You know what the lost continent of Atlantis was? North and South America. As the earth was being divided, and we have historical references to this now, that they actually saw this continent out there, and all of a sudden, they didn't see it anymore. What was happening? The earth was dividing itself. God was causing it to divide. When you drill down in the earth and you find... Uh, clam shells and all kinds of fish bones and clams and everything you can think of down there in this deal if you're a Mormon you know what you do is you say that's this evidence that the devil's throwing at us if you're a Muslim you say oh that's, that's the devil that's false information if you tell a Mormon or not a Mormon but a Muslim that the earth is round he might cut your throat did you know that they have done that. But does the Bible... Now, I have... I heard a guy on the radio here a while back. I'm telling the truth, aren't I, Marilyn? Now, you listen to what I'm saying. He said the earth was flat and that NASA had been lying to us. He was a Christian. Where did he get that idea? I asked him after. I said, are you Muslim? <laughs> I said, they believe the earth's flat. But I said, the Bible says the earth is a circuit. And the earth turns on its axis. And in the book of Enoch, we even have all of the seasons and everything set forth as God made it. We see all of this stuff. This, is, this, this isn't fantasy. These are scientific facts. Can a woman, could a woman, is it possible for a woman to have a child without sin being virgin born? Absolutely. God made that possible. Okay? God created the earth perfect, and the earth became tuhu wahu, formless and void. Destruction. Absolute destruction. Well, a lot of these people that, are, that these scientists that you're talking about, they're looking at scriptures as, as unbelievers, though. And they, they, there's no faith there. No, there so isn't. So how, how, they'll, they'll never see it, even as much as they study. I wish I'd have been on that radio program today. I wish I could put this on a radio program to give people... That man was going to go back and said that his son would have to, have to accept the virgin birth by faith. Yes, you do. But it's more than that. It's possible. It's absolutely possible. The virgin birth is medically possible. It is possible. And it did happen. It did happen. 
Do you have any questions so far? You got a young man here listening, aren't you? Are you learning something in this? I hope you are. I'm not trying to to absolutely founder you. Do you even know what being foundered is? Marilyn, I think you know what foundered is? Yeah. Uh huh. What is it? Huh? Horses eat too much grain and get too much to eat and they get foundered and crippled. I'm not trying to cripple you by feeding you too much. Yeah. <laughs> that's where the word foundered comes from. Okay, that's where it comes from. And I'm going to tell you something that will kill a horse faster than anything and founder a horse. And that's leaves off of a black walnut tree. That's poison to a horse. Leaves off a of black walnut tree. Just put that down somewhere. That's a fact. Do you have any questions in here where we are so far? So far. Let's go back in Genesis and look at it. I don't have my text with me tonight. But let's go back and look and see what happened here. I want you to go back in Genesis, the ninth chapter, or the tenth chapter. We're not there yet. I want you to write this out, and I want you to put it in yellow, red, purple, or green, some color, because this is very important. Put an asterisk on it, uh, five stars or something. And here we have a, a genealogy. A genealogy. And it says, And the shons of Shem were Elam, Ashur, Arphaxad, Lud, and Aram. The sons of Aram were Uz, Hul, Gether, and Mash. Our facts had became the father of Shelah, and Shelah became the father of Eber. And Eber here, you know what that is? What's Eber? This is Hebrew. Write that word down there, Hebrew. Hebrew. Hebrew means what, Marilyn? Do you remember? Hebrew. Hebrew. Sharon. From across the river. Those from across the river. Our facts had became the father of Shelah, and Shelah became the father of Eber. And two sons were born to Eber, and the name of one was Peleg. Peleg. Now, we know that science teaches that the earth was one piece of land and one water at one time. Now, Genesis 9.25, right here, is where the earth is divided. His name became Peleg, for in his days the earth became divided. In his days the earth became divided. Divided. Now what caused this? What caused God to divide the earth? Why did he do it? Did the earth did he want to make the earth balance better? What did he do? Why did God divide the earth? Because they were uh, they were uh, not recognizing God, but they they were what's the word for it? They want to become like God. Human government. Human government. Scatter and multiply. Oh, maybe. What happened here? There was an individual. Who was this bad boy? He stole the clothes of Adam and Eve. Did you know that? <laughs> Historically, read it in the book of Jasher. This guy stole Adam and Eve's clothes, so he thought he would be stronger and, 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 and live a long time. What was his name? Who knows his name? Nimrod. And what did he do? He built a great big tower. Now, was that tower built? Is there archaeological evidence of that tower? Absolutely. There's archaeological evidence of really? that tower. Absolutely. I've never seen any pictures of that before. They have finally found Babylon. They finally found Babylon, and it's way over there, right exactly where it was. And in the day, in the Bible, talks their revolution, the book of Revelation talks about the rebuilding of Babylon, doesn't it? And it's not in Rome. It's over there where Babylon is. It's absolutely. Babylon existed. The tower existed. Okay? Let's go back here. 
They were supposed to scatter and multiply. So what did God do? Genesis 11, 1 through 4, they didn't scatter. And what was that judgment? Genesis 11, 5 and 9 was a confusion of languages. There are 2,956 basic language groups, I believe. If I remember right, then that, I could fault on that because my memory is not so good. I remember there was a big There's a lot of languages. One, yeah. A lot of languages. Yeah. A lot of languages in the world. You said 900 and what? 2,956. Oh, 2,900. 2,956 languages in the world. There were many languages in the in the American continents. There was over 3,000 languages in America, in the American continents, here in this side of the world. Now, if you were God, and you decided to split up the earth and divide people so they wouldn't kill each other, okay? Now, people were supposed to scatter and multiply, okay? And they didn't scatter, so God caused the confusion of languages. There at the Tower of Babel, we says that the people couldn't understand each other. So what would you do if you couldn't understand somebody? You want to go someplace where you could be understood and you could talk. So they divided up and they went this way. And then what God to do besides that? He started dividing the land. The, the Bible says that God divided the land and the land was one piece, doesn't it? Now, the scientists, the anthropologists, for a long time thought that the American continent was over here uninhabited. By the, and there was nobody here on the American continent. That's what they taught when I went to school, that the American continent was uninhabited. And the Smithsonian Institute, every time they'd find some ancient evidence of ancient inhabitation of the Americas, they would, sub, they would just squelch it. Now they know that America has been occupied for the same time as the rest of the world. Amen. Is the Bible right? Amen. Yes. That science makes mistakes. Science makes mistakes. Well, sometimes science figures it out later. Yeah. The Bible says they, it all along, but so yeah. it, takes a little while getting around. it took a long time for people to realize that the earth was not flat. The earth looks flat, doesn't it? When you get out there, especially in Kansas, Maryland. <laughs> Kansas? That's what they used to live. Kansas? You know what Kansas is like. It's nothing but buffalo waters. That's it. Yeah, miles and miles and miles. I want to cross Kansas one time. Brother Ray, when I was a pastor, your pastor a long time ago, I went back to Oklahoma and I went across Kansas and I had a 1975 Thunderbird. And that thing got seven miles per gallon when I was doing 120 or five miles per hour and I was 120 across Kansas. I wanted to get across that today. 120 miles an hour, seven miles per gallon. Woof! Get across that country. But you know what? It used to have... Mankind messed it up. They used to be buffalo all over that country. And, elk and, and antelope and all of these animals out there, God made it that way. Now the Mormons say, the Mormon religion says that America was inhabited by Jews. Did you know that? They came from uh, over in Europe in the Middle East in a boat thereof. Did you know that? It was a submarine. <laughs> a submarine. They came across and God was God didn't have any sails on or anything else. Well, they had a, a, they had quite imagination. Actually, a man by the name of Solomon Spaulding wrote this thing. It, he was it was a fiction because everybody wondered out how wonder how the Indians got here. What's the Bible say about the Indians? They were Jews. They were here. <laughs> they weren't Jews either. They are sons of a ham. And not only they were sons of Ham, but they're from the Asian race. Because there is where America was divided from. Now with DNA, we have DNA. I did my DNA about how many years ago? Seven, eight years ago? Nine years ago? Something like that, Marilyn. I always knew I was Indian. But I'm 88.6% American Indian. And guess where it goes back? Genghis Khan and all that bunch. 
That's exactly where it came from. They're, it's Asian. My great, great, great grandmother, you'd think she was pure Chinese or Mongolian or something, the way she looked. And when I was young, I had slanted eyes, didn't I? Little old squinty eye. My daughter went to the doctor the other day, to the ophthalmologist, and they looked at her eyes and they said, Open your eyes. She says, My eyes are open. <laughs> <laughs> And she, said, and she opened her eyes real wide. And she says, your eyes are not open. Open them up. And she says, the only way I'm open further is pry them open. Because her eyes are slanted like mine. The oriental eyes. Okay. You see a purebred Indian, he's going to have slanted eyes. If he says he's purebred and he don't have slanted eyes, he probably isn't. You see the high-blooded Indians are going to have slanted eyes. Because we're oriental we came from the Orient. That's where we came from. Because that's from the word that God divided. But now if you're a Mormon, what? You came across the ocean in a, in a boat thereof. And it got over there and it had stale air in this boat. So that God told them to build a hole, drill a hole in the bottom thereof and a hole in the top thereof. Now when you're in a boat, when you drill a, boat, a hole in the bottom thereof and a hole in the top thereof, what happens? <laughs> You go down there up. Yeah, that's right. You go down there up. Now, let's just think about this for a while. Is that a scientific fact? This one must have been somebody's far-flung imagination. Huh. Well, was it or not? How did the American Indians get here? When God divided the earth, they were here. Now, Mormonism will tell you today, when you look at the DNA, they said, well, that is a tool of the devil. because it blows away their theory that Joseph Smith gave to them. Right. But what it was, was everybody wanted to know where these Indians come from. And then we have the British-Israeli theory. Remember that? The British-Israeli theory. What's all that? That the British Isles were occupied by Jews. Remember last week I told you about the, the, the Stone of Scone. Remember that? The Stone of Scone. Jacob's Pillar. All right, Jacob's pillar and the throne in Scotland. There is a throne over there, and underneath that was a pillar, a, a, a stone that Jacob was supposed to put there. Did you know they stole that thing a couple of times and, and tried to hijack it to get money for it? Did you know that how many times Abraham Lincoln was buried? You know that some Irish outlaws were trying to steal his body and to and to deplete the American treasury to get their president back. <laughs> that he was finally buried in a coffin in Lincoln in, in, in his tomb now. That they took it and buried him real deep and then poured cement all over the top of him. So nobody could steal him. Because he'd been moved. I can't remember how many times he was buried. Five or six times. Yeah, five or six times he was buried. How about Buffalo Bill Cody? They took him and buried him over there in Colorado. They buried him real deep and poured cement all over the top so they couldn't take him and move him someplace else. They wanted him there. I don't care how much you want something. You can't make, you can't make these theories of religion. The earth is not flat. It is not held down by mountains to keep it from blowing away. The American Indian didn't come across the boat in the ocean there and a boat there with a top, hole in the top there and a hole in the bottom there. That's against science, isn't it? Yes, but they said it was a miracle. It's a miracle. It's all a miracle. you got to believe. I tell you to believe. Believe. If the Lord Jesus Christ convicts your soul of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come, Believe. Judgment is coming. Every religion in the world talks about a judgment, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Not every religion in the world talks about hell, though, does it? Yep. Which religions don't believe in hell? Jehovah Witnesses Witness don't. Seventh-day Adventists don't. Mormonisms don't. Mormonism doesn't. You'll never get to the third heaven until you're a good Mormon husband and go into the temple and pay your tithe. You know what? Have you ever heard of that? Yes. Yeah. The third heaven. You're not going to get there unless you do this. 
Now, Muhammad had seven heavens. How many does the Bible say we have? Three. Three. We have the atmosphere. That's a Greek word. Atmosphere. We have where the stars and the galaxies are, and there are a lot of them out there, aren't they? They're still finding more all the time. And then up here in the third heaven above is what? Heaven. Hashemayim. Heaven. Paradise. And down here out in the third heaven is what, Brother Ray? Sheol. 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 Out there is a bottomless pit. Out there. So the third heaven is divided into two halves. One half is heaven, the other half is hell. Is that what you think? <coughs> kind of, sort of. Right. In, a, in a way, yes. Now we know that the earth one time, or that, that Sheol, Sheol and Hades, where were they at one time? Together. Mm-hmm. With a great gulf between them. How far is that gulf? I don't know. Huh? How far could it be? The gulf. Well, we know that these rascals over here in, in torment side could look over here and see these over here, couldn't they? Because we in Luke 6 and 16 chapter, we have an evidence of that, don't we, in the Bible? So they could see that far. Now, here we have paradise or Abraham's bosom. And then we have over here, we have hell. Okay? Now, why was this here? This was a place of paradise to hold them until Christ fulfilled his... Uh, his uh, all the way from here, it says the la- that our names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life in the eternity past, doesn't it? But in eternity past, Jesus Christ hadn't died for our sins, had he? In space and time, Jesus Christ would have to die for our sins, so could anybody really go to heaven? No. How are we saved by what? We're saved by what? Grace. How could anybody really go to the third heaven until the price was paid? And that's what we talked about tonight, remember, in the Lord's Supper. So they were in paradise before, <coughs> during that time? When a person died all the way from here, all the way to here, they went to paradise. Amen. Okay, what about if somebody dies today? Today they get to go to the third heaven. Amen. So so when did, when did the people in paradise go to heaven? At what point in time? Okay, according to Peter, Jesus Christ descended down into descended down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where is it? Where was this possibly at? Way down yonder. Now, the price had yeah. not been paid. He descended down into Sheol. Mm-hmm. Sheol means what? The place Sheol means what? The place of the spirits. The place asked about. What does Hades mean? They're the same place, but one of them we have Hades in Greek and we have Sheol in Hebrew. Hades. Hades. What does Hades mean? The place not seen. Okay? So we have Hades and we have Paradise. Okay? Now, when Jesus Christ died and he was buried, his body went into the grave, but his soul and spirit went where? to Sheol Mm -hmm. and he preached to these people and told them what I have overcome I have done it I have paid the price and you get to go with me when I raise Mm -hmm. so three days later guess what they went and changed their place of residence brother Mm -hmm. you have the first fruits of the resurrection are you learning Yeah. a little bit He takes them from here, and he takes them up to the third heaven. Now, some of these people, I don't know how many, and nobody else does either, but some of these people walked around on the earth, and they were resurrected. Resurrected like Jesus. Now, can you imagine how many people you ever seen walk through a wall? 
without damage in the water. I was going to say, I was thinking that. Too. That was a time when I was young, Brother Ray. I could walk to a wall, couldn't I? I could walk to a wall. I had no problem. I tear the wall down first and walk right through it. I can't do that anymore. Up here last... See that bruise on my hand? That's when I just bumped that just a little bit. See, I'm not, I'm fragile, fragile now. Wow, that was on Sunday. Huh? Yeah, that was on Sunday. I just bumped it. I can't do that anymore. But you know what? Jesus' anatomy is so lined up with the universe that he could walk through. And you know, now this is another scientific fact. Have you ever heard of an atom? Yeah. Nobody's ever really seen an atom, but they know he exists, don't they? And it's in motion. And very little of that atom is actually solid matter. It's floating around like this, like a miniature universe, just like this. Like a miniature universe. Protons and neutrons, they're just flying in every direction, aren't they? Just going around in their little orbits. And, when, and you know what the word atom means in Greek? It's atoma. Not able to be split. When you split it, there's a problem. And so they split the atom, and what do we have? An atomic bomb. J. Lewis Guthrie talked about the atomic bomb being created before it was ever created, because he was a physicist. Dr. J. Lewis Guthrie, which was a Baptist preacher, which wrote Christ and Creation and the Creation of the Heavens and the Earth, and several other books which are on the website. We see these miniature universes, and Brother Ray... You're so tall. I was six foot two one time, weighed 240 pounds. I'm not even near any of those figures today. Not anywhere near that. But when I was six foot two and weighed 240 pounds, if you took all the space out of me, I would be not even that big. Mm -hmm. But I would still weigh 240 pounds. Because most of me was space. Most of you is space. Most of the chair you're sitting upon is space. Now you sat down on that chair and you sat down by faith it's going to hold you up. I sat on some chairs sometimes didn't hold me up. You ever, you ever do that before? What it wasn't because they weren't, the structure wouldn't hold me. It was they weren't sound. They just weren't sound. We do all of this stuff. We see this. Jesus Christ, after the resurrection, he walked through walls. He could go from one dimension to the other. How many dimensions are there? Basically, at least ten. Do we see those dimensions? We only know about three dimensions. But are the others there? Is the Bible believe in this? Do angels travel from dimension to dimension without any problem? Yeah. Did Jesus travel from dimension to dimension without any problem? Do spirits go from dimension to dimension without any problem? Is that a scientific and a Bible fact? Is it? So can you look at the Bible and, and be, it be, if you look at it correctly, <clears throat> the earth wasn't flat. The, the earth wasn't the center of the universe. The earth is not the center of the universe. The sun is the center of our galaxy. The earth is a planet in that galaxy put in exactly the right place by God himself. So it will sustain life. So that through that one little earth that we live in, which is just a speck of dust in the whole universe, that God would redeem the whole universe back to himself through that speck of dirt. Mm -hmm. Isn't that neat? Brother Vincent, what song do we have? Oh, wow. <laughs> we have a song? Yeah, I know we're at the end. We're, right, so <laughs> we're at the end, end brother. That's why I like to leave it. Boy, just stop it right there. <laughs> Come on. Uh, we got uh, him 304. Now, if you have any questions, I will answer them. Did you have any? Who the me? That means nothing? Okay. That's why I have to go along. Uh, 304. 304. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer.
and be safe tonight, you can, wherever you are in the world or here. If you want to join this church or whatever you want to do that, you can do that here. If you want to give your life to God in some special service, you can do that also, wherever you are in the world, because this thing goes out every which way. Amen. Thank you for putting up with me tonight. One more time. I started out very shaky, but I ended up strong, I hope. <laughs> Well, I think I'm blowing my eardrums out. <laughs> <laughs> I got better. Obviously. As time went on. I got better. Amen. Anyway, God bless all of you.